We've been talking about key factors for succeeding with hemp. And today we're focused on uh, irrigation and nutrition techniques. Give us a rundown on the types of irrigation you would be thinking about for, for hemp. Well, the different types of irrigation is, can be thought of as, you know, how are you gonna efficiently get to the water and to the root zone? So there's, there's several different ways that, that agriculturally this has been accomplished. One is with a, a center pivot, more of an overhead type watering. Hemp benefits from having what they call drop downs on your pivot, so you're actually applying the water underneath the foliage as much as possible on the plant. Another way of accomplishing this is through drip irrigation. And a lot of the drip irrigation systems can be underneath plastic with a drip line that's right on the ground with a partially buried drip line or all the way down to sub irrigation where there's permanent drip lines or permanent watering lines that are underneath the soil that the water straight into the root zone. The last way that, that we see that is the least expensive of all is flood irrigation. And flood irrigation is very difficult control your nutrient application. It's going to have wetter areas in the field. If you have to have perfect level uh, ground for the, for the water to get across, and typically one side of the field will get more water than the other. And, and what would be my criteria for determining one of these techniques versus another? Well, part of it depends on your soil type. Uh, a sandier soil, you're going to have to water uh, much more, and so you're going to need some type of drip because sometimes in the sandy soils, it's difficult for that boom to get all the way back around on a center pivot. Uh, you also have to take in consideration if you're using uh, the sub irrigation or underground irrigation and you're in a, a high salt level soil or you're having to adjust pH with acid injection, then that's difficult to really get that water flowing through the soil from a sub irrigation pipe. How do I know how much water to apply when? Oh, that's a great question. So uh, determining when and how to water is first of all, it's best done with, especially early in the process, by checking your soil, by digging down a little bit, and looking at what the soil profile is, allowing it to dry down in between waterings, particularly early. So you gotta envision driving these roots down to look for water. So you don't wanna keep it to where it's totally wet on the very top of the soil. You wanna really look at to where the water is down in that root zone. There's a product called a tensiometer or tension meter that measures the amount of water in your soil. And those are really good tools to use, but it still should be just giving you a basic idea. Uh, you wanna let the plants dry down between waterings early in the crop cycle to where you're starting to see just a little bit of wilt. That's letting you know that the roots are having to look for water. And it can often be several days in between waterings with some soil types when they're young. When they're a little bit older, you get into a pattern and then midway through the season, you kind of, you know that you're watering every other day or every three days. A deep watering that's gonna last a little longer is much better than frequent shallow watering. Because frequent shallow watering, again, you're not driving those roots further in the soil. So you create, create a shallow root system. So you, you water deeply, then you let it dry down till the plant needs a little bit of water, not to the point where you're getting leaf curl and you're burning the foliage and all that, but they need to show a little bit of wilt. And then towards the end of the crop cycle, and again, this was a mistake a lot of farmers that we saw struggle with, is it doesn't look like it's using more water. Mm. It is. And when it's in full flower, you need to make sure that you keep water available to it. So uh, uh, several farmers would go from every other day watering in a sandy soil to almost every day watering uh, in, in the flower cycle towards the end. And Steve, what is fertigation? Fertigation is feeding your plants through your drip irrigation system. Or, well, it can be through overhead and other means of irrigation as well. What factors would I consider when I'm thinking about my fertigation plan? Well, of course, your soil test reports and what has been reported back. Another thing you need to consider is uh, what phase and development your hemp crop is in. As you get into the flowering stages, you're going to reduce your nitrogen a little bit. Don't want to reduce it too much because that could cause it to maybe stress and that might spike your THC levels. And you want to raise your phosphorus because it needs it for those buds. A lot of cultivators are coming from an indoor environment. Now they're cultivating large uh, outdoor fields. What might be available to them in terms of cost-effective uh, irrigation techniques or, or, or nutrients? 
We have seen hemp plants in particular really respond to organic soil techniques. What that means is instead of using heavy nitrate nitrogen fertilizers and some of the traditional ag fertilizers, uh, we've seen a lot of our farmers really succeed with uh, crop rotations with legumes to fix nitrogen, uh, to actually adding in different types of manures, uh, more of a traditional organic method, and then some water-soluble organics. Uh, those types of uh, products in a fertigation system. And another thing to, to touch on briefly here, you should learn about soil microbes. Uh, healthy soil microbes, a living soil, uh, keeping that those microbes happy and, and adding some to make sure that you have the right microbes in your soil is something that seems to be uh, a really key factor on some of the better crops. Is there a preferred delivery method when it comes to watering on using those water soluble? Nutrients. A fertigation system we talked about earlier uh, is gives you the ability to inject those products mm -hmm. into your water along with it. You have to be careful because uh, you want you don't want to clog up all those uh, nozzles or holes or yeah. all of that. So you need to understand how what you're applying is going to react. But yes, it's typically done with um, either a venturi type, which is can can have ebbs and flow and surges and it's not as predictable to the more predictable, uh, a solid uh, powered injector system. So, you know, what are our observations of fields in 2019 from the standpoint of irrigation nutri nutrition? The ideal conditions are to get your organic matter up in the soil, you know, two to 3%, as much as 5% if you can get it there, and have a healthy living uh, soil, and then you don't have to apply all these extra fertilizers during mm -hmm. the crop cycle. Another good rule of thumb is to figure out where you are and either use tissue or sap analysis several times during your crop cycle to let you know if the plant needs more of possibly a micronutrient or one of your top three major nutrients.